Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome back to Versus. Today, I give you the series debut of Glossuta Original. The question we ask between these two sports chronographs of similar size, style, and function, is the Rolex Daytona three times the watch of the 70s chronograph? Versus starts now. Follow up to 2006's acclaimed Senator's 60s collection, the Senator's 70s bowed in 2011. Since reclassed from the Senator collection to the retro themed vintage family, the 70s theme spawned today's definitive 70s chronograph panorama date in 2014. Behold the high horology German sports watch for which we've pined. It's not a Zinn, Damasco, Tutima, UTS, or Mulla, and Geo beat Langa to the punch among the premier purveyors of Teutonic time. Tellers. Neither a tonneau nor a cushion, this 100 meter water resistant flyback chronograph isn't shy about declaring its influences. The integration of steel case, lugs, bezel, and either strap or full bracelet pays loving homage to the 1970s heyday of integrated steel sportsters like the Royal Oak, Nautilus, Ingenieur SL, Laureato, and Rolex Oyster Quartz. But, like a Greta Van Fleet concert where the loaded Led Zeppelin tribute comes in style and stagecraft rather than actual cover music, the Geo 70s chronograph channels the spirit and norms of its namesake era without plagiarizing any specific model. Contrasting polish and satin finishes the Genta without Genta effect, and a substantial junction of crown, guards, and chronograph pushers ensures formidable wrist presence despite the nominal 40mm size. And indeed, it wears more like a 43. Despite its steel construction, the massive 70s chrono feels as heavy or more so on the wrist than the gold Roly. Glasuta's strap is masterful, but a proprietary lug junction means your alternatives include only factory leather or the superb bracelet. Comfort is class leading, and despite the lack of Rolex style cores or rubber bellows, the Geo's conventional adjustable pin buckle and fluid sizing saves you from a do or die strap size selection at the time of purchase. The 70s Chrono pulls far beyond its source material in dial quality and complexity. Ruthenium galvanized, sunburst metallic, and made at Geo's Forsheim Germany dial manufacturer, this face is one of three offered blue and silver alternatives exist. And handsome though they are, the anthracite gleam of this version blends perfectly with the grayscale of the case to create what might be the most coherent look possible for this particular model. In any color, Geo's dial achieves a masterful balancing act. The 70s chrono hides a triple scale chronograph in the space of a vintage double thanks to the discrete hours disc at 12. It is balanced by the double date at 6. A mini power reserve shares space with the constant seconds at 9 to preserve the cruciform symmetry. The latter quality is a major stylistic point of distinction from the Rolex. While larger and heavier in fact, the Geo brilliantly pairs the visual weight by slimming its bezel and running the dial as broad as possible. Compared to the smaller Rolex's heavy bezel and strangled dial to note this effect. Loom is excellent and underscores the 70s Chrono's sports watch credentials, but it is balanced toward the hands rather than indices. Turn the Geo on its side and witness Saxony's main broadside against Geneva's favored son. A broad display case back glorifies the manufacturer automatic caliber 3702. Launched on this 70s chronograph in 2014 and built expressly for this model, the fit is perfect flyback chrono action, power reserve display, double date, and 70 hour power reserve match and surpass the Rolex's roster of features. And if you ever doubted the Germans are secretly humorous and wacky, when given the chance, the Geo's caseback chronograph on-off indicator should put paid to all doubt. Whimsy comes naturally with this one. Richness comes in the form of stripes, fired blued screws, straight grained chronograph levers, black polished column wheel and swan's neck regulator, and a double spiral winding reduction wheel, all of which issue a challenge for which Rolex's cloistered caliber has no answer. It's 
hard to believe that Rolex launched its first ceramic bezel Daytona all the way back in 2011. The Oysterflex rubberized bracelet bowed on the Yachtmaster in 2015. Today's Daytona Cerachrom Oysterflex arrived as a trio of gold rubber-clad cosmographs at Basel World 2017. As with the Submariner and GMT, the other legs of Rolex's flagship triad, the Daytona's enduring style is a core strength of the model and the foundation of its immunity to obsolescence. Externally, little has changed since the first Daytona Automatic of 1988, and today's star maintains the same fluid external form with tapered lugs, rounded caseband, and slim profile. The last feature allows this cosmograph to wear with immeasurably greater grace than the chunky Glasuta. Thanks to a strong visual link to the Datejust and Date 8 case forms, the Daytona remains a viable dress option. And at 47.8 millimeters lug to lug, smaller wrists of 14 centimeters or under should choose the Daytona by default. The ceramic bezel is scratch resistant and optically impressive. Along with the screw down crowns and guards, this broad bezel ensures that the Daytona's overall profile remains on the sporting end of the style spectrum. Rolex Grey Gold 18 karat is blended in-house and never needs to be rhodium plated. It's a white gold with silvery sheen that allows this 18 karat Daytona to cop a steel fashion for uncommon discretion among 18 karat oysters. Rolex's Oysterflex bracelet is exactly that. Despite appearances, this is a continuous band of titanium nickel alloy that runs from lugs to clasp and back again. Selecting the correct size at purchase is key, but Rolex does add sumptuous bellows on the underside to hug the wrist and provide supplemental security. An oyster clasp in white gold contains a small clamshell lock for security, a 5mm easy link adjustment, and three alternate anchoring points for the strap. Rolex calls this sunburst metallic dial steel, and the moniker fits. The emotional appeal of a traditional balanced tri-register dial is tough to resist, and our Daytona compounds the power of its ageless visage with black tone-on-tone -tone registers. Not only does this work in concert with the black bezel and the strap, but it adds much needed intensity to an otherwise cool, even austere overall ambiance. Assembly and materials are microchip factory precise, flawless, and surgically applied. Top to bottom balance is quirky. The red Daytona script at six sets the blood pumping, but the long form advertising pitch at 12 o'clock elicits chuckles. I can imagine the same billboard text effect from another company that also boasts billions and billions served. Loom is reasonable, but the indices seem to carry more material than the hands. It's the diametric opposite of the 70s chrono. Rolex offers an automatic caliber 4130 that matches Geo's column wheel, vertical clutch, and 70-hour power reserve. Although clearly the first Rolex automatic caliber designed with improved finish in mind when launched in 2000, the real competitive advantage against the Geo is Rolex's focus on precision and toughness. A COSC Swiss chronometer cased up and guaranteed to run at least minus two plus two seconds per day or better, the Rolex offers factory guaranteed accuracy beyond anything Geo has, even its German chronometers anti-magnetic hairspring alloy, a full balance bridge for shock resistance, and likely real-world water resistance are the Daytona's play for your sports chronograph dollar. Trip lock, rather than twin lock crown and screw down pushers, suggest that the 100 meter water resistance rating is conservative, likely by at least 25%. Glasuta Original 70s chronograph, advantages. Do you love movements? You'll love this one, and you'll see it every day. Rarity, at 10 to 15,000 watches per year as a brand, Geo's 70s chrono production is minuscule. Rolex likely makes more Daytonas than all Geo output combined. Flyback chronograph, date display, power reserve indicator. Go Geo if you want any of the above. Do you love 70s watch style but eschew vintage watch scammers and handle with care restrictions? 70s chrono! Spring for the epic bracelet at only $2,400 extra and complete the ghost of Gerald Genta effect. All of the Rolex functionality, none of the Rolex brand baggage. Unbeatable value pre-owned, at one-third the price of a white gold Oysterflex Daytona, and even steel ceramic Daytonas are trading at over 25 grand these days. Rolex Cosmograph Daytona Advantages. Timeless, ageless, add your own superlative. Rolex's design has stood the test of ages and rejects planned obsolescence. Slimmer, superior fit, and the obvious choice for smaller male wrists or females who crave Geneva's ultimate power watch. For certain purists, and I'm looking at you, Nicholas. The absence of a date is a feature, not a bug. 
mechanical toughness, and precision, the Rolex opens a gap to the GO. Chronograph feel just by a hair, but it's there. For the time being, the value of these Daytonas defies gravity on secondary markets. Warranty, five years to Glossutas too. Irony falls heavily. The Daytona is the German Porsche 911 of our test, never discontinued, constantly improved, and always recognizable. It's not retro, it's a living legend and an unbroken tradition none who partake will regret. But even with pricing dead even, I'd still find the 70s chrono more interesting, mechanically, artistically, and intangibly. I'll take this retro-inflected underdog from Saxony. Consider it the BMW Z8 to the Rolex's 911. Make mine the Beamer.